All right, let's go ahead and do Tundra. Um, if you'll notice in this picture, there are no trees. Um, there's a bunch of bushes and shrubs, maybe. Um, but there are no trees. Let's, let's get into that. Let's figure out why. Uh, that's one of the defining characteristics for not for living things is that there are no trees. So if you want to go and take your notes down, uh, write down that for the tundra generally. So we're going to talk about tundra, then the Arctic tundra, and then the Alpine tundra. So first for general tundra information, tundras are found in two different locations. They're found in the far north and they're found on the tops of mountains in the far north and at the tops of mountains. The ones in the far north are called the Arctic tundra, and that has to do with where it is on the map. If you look on the, in the, on the map of our globe, of our Earth, of Earth, goodness, you'll see that the Arctic circle is up near, uh, up in the extreme north. Let's look at this picture. So you have the Arctic circle is up here at the top. So kind of how we have Tropic of Cancer and Capricorn, we also have an Arctic circle and an and Arctic Circle, the opposite of the Arctic Circle. So up here, if you see a biome that's a tundra, if you see a tundra biome up here in the far north, that is the Arctic Tundra because it's found in the Arctic Circle. Um, defining characteristic, there are no trees found in the tundra. Zero trees found in the tundra. We'll talk about that for both reasons, why that is. Um, the tundra is the coldest biome. Now, talked about before the coldest biome, we talked about a, the coldest forest. The coldest forest was the taiga. Again, if you'll look at this map, the taiga is up in the northern part, but it's not quite up in the Arctic Circle. So if you start, you know, far north is the taiga. If you go farther than that, the trees stop growing because you're in the tundra. So it's the coldest biome. And there's two types, Arctic and Alpine. If you'll notice, there's very little rainfall. There's not a lot of rain. And the winters here can get extremely cold. So look, the average temperature for summer is 46 degrees. That's our average for winter. Um, probably higher than I don't know what our average, um, I don't remember our average for the temperature deciduous force, but that's their average summer temperature. Very, very, very cold here. All right, so we get to Arctic tundra. Now, this is a big word you need to write down, permafrost. Arctic tundra, probably the number the number one uh, vocab word you need to know for Arctic tundra is permafrost. That's the combination between two words, frost, which means to be frozen, and perma, which means, this is the prefix to permanent, permanent. So it is permanently frozen ground. It's soil that is always frozen. And so if you get to the taiga, the taiga has a permafrost, but it's a lot lower into the ground. So the taiga may have permafrost that's 15 feet down into the ground, that it never really has the time to cool off or to warm up. Um, but the Arctic tundra has permafrost inches below the ground. Um, so there's a story that I told the last class, the... Um, I went to Atlanta on a mission trip, uh, Alaska on a mission trip, and we were in the middle of nowhere. We had to go as a plane, a small plane ride, and then a boat ride from there. <clears throat> well, there, we're in the taiga, but we had somebody had to dig porta potties. So when they dug porta potties in the tundra, so a, uh, it's not a porta potty, I guess. I guess it's an outhouse. When they dug an outhouse, um, which is where you go bathroom. Um, when they dug the outhouse, they had to dig down 15, 20 feet, something like that. I, I would guess about 15, 10 to 15 feet. Um, but when they did that, they had to get through the permafrost. So what they did is they had to put trash on the ground, like our uh, paper plates from the night before. And then they put a little bit of diesel on there to catch it on fire. They start a fire down there, let the fire die out, go down, dig an inch or two of dirt out, climb back out of the hole, catch it on fire again. They did this repeatedly because there was permafrost deep in the ground. But there was enough dirt that wasn't frozen that trees could grow. So you think about tree roots. Tree roots need to go, for the most part, there's there are, for, there's some trees that need to go deep into the ground. And in that part of Alaska, they had enough room. But when you get to the tundra, which is even further north than, than the taiga, you're starting to get into where the ground stays permanently frozen almost, or it stays frozen year round. There may be a couple inches of soil. <clears throat> Think about maybe four or five inches, two or three inches of soil at the top that's just kind of wet and soggy. That's thawed out. 
but below that you can't dig a hole you couldn't dig a hole here without some kind of fire or flame or some kind of heat source um so tree roots can't go down there so permanently frozen ground water is available the surface is wet and soggy some friends of mine hiked around um and went around denali and they said it was just really soggy wet ground in the summertime because it had thawed out a little bit and there's just just soggy everywhere they said you had to change it your feet were just wet for a long time um and lakes and ponds are plentiful so permafrost definitely the key word there for arctic tundra that's why trees don't grow there here's some examples and you'll notice that a common color for all these animals is white so that it blends in with the surroundings so you have a arctic fox that is looking for the hare arctic hare they're both white the arctic hare is white so it so the fox doesn't see it um and so it can get away and live and not get eaten the fox is white so it can sneak up on the rabbit and eat it so it doesn't die so the predator and prey are both camouflaged same thing with the polar bear <clears throat> similar thing i think the polar bear if i you can correct me if you're, i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure the polar bear has um has dark skin but it has uh it the its hair is reflecting the snow i could be wrong on that y'all feel free to correct me if i'm wrong um but a lot of the food web a lot of the food web is um has a lot of white animals white furred animals and surprise surprise they have to keep warm so they probably have um they have thick fur to keep help keep them warm except i guess these herbivores that don't care a little fox isn't going to kill them um they don't care that they don't blend in um, or maybe it I i'm not sure i'm not sure why this one's not white i'm guessing because it doesn't need to be a little fox isn't going to kill it maybe a polar bear could kill it but it, i imagine it would be a, a painful fight for the polar bear if it ran it got ran by these <coughs> um so that's arctic tundra alpine tundra now alpine tundra um you're going to write down the alpine tundra is located above the tree line of tall mountains so if you'll notice this is a picture um you can kind of see if that little thing will get out of there um this little rock that's down there there's a tree right right around here when that thing moves um these are this is zoomed out these are this isn't grass as you see these things are trees these aren't shrubs these are massive trees uh, so we're kind of zoomed out and you can see right along the top here this is the tree line um and this is due to the altitude now we've not talked about altitude a lot remember that last uh altitude or elevation this biome depends on the elevation it's a major abiotic factor and so because of its altitude if you know anything if you've ever been to like colorado like denver or somewhere high in altitude you know it's more difficult to breathe there because the oxygen is more spread out um now i'm not exactly sure what is going on with the trees here um it could be that similar respiration processes are more difficult um also when you get up higher in elevation water can't be held as easily so when you when you go up in elevation it cools off and cold air holds less water than warm air if you think about a cold glass of water what is it if you put ice in a glass of water and set it there the condensation groups up on the edge because the air that we're breathing right now has water in it and when it gets cold, cold and it's warmer it's say 70 degrees 80 degrees when it gets close to that cold glass the air cools down and it drop it can't hold on to the water anymore so it lets it go and it, the glass is right there so the glass holds onto the water in the same way a tundra when the air comes up here it can't hold the water very well so this is a very dry area so it can't support trees um but it can support things like flowers and you can see up here um a lot of flowers small shrubs stuff like that so i remember i went hiking on Mount elbert one time and going through, I may have told you all this already, but as I was going up the mountain, um, somewhere around halfway up, the tree line started getting, the tree started thinning out more and more. So it started to where it's just like, hey, we could put a tent over here, whereas before we couldn't, until eventually there were no, there were fewer and fewer trees until the, we passed our last tree. And the rest of the hike, it looked like this. Beautiful view, beautiful um, flower, stuff like that. Um, but there were no trees. You could see for pretty far because there were no trees. But here's some examples. You can write down these examples. <coughs> yep, write down some of those examples of plants and animals, uh, mostly animals, that are in this biome. 